my partner is emotionally cheating outside of our relationship. Now, how do you know if somebody's emotionally cheating? What are the signs? Is there something that is super obvious that we should all be paying attention to in our relationships? Or is this something that we should just be trusting our partner not to do? So we all have friendships outside of our immediate relationship. That's a given, and it should be. You shouldn't have to sit there and not have opposite sex friends or have some sort of fun with other people in your life and it's just all about your spouse. That's not right. And so you want to be able to have that freedom even though you're in a relationship. But where do you draw the line? What do you start noticing that it's coming out of the friendship zone and now it's delving into different areas that are a little bit more questionable? Would you talk to your spouse or your partner about the same things you're having a conversation with them about? Are you playful with this person like you are with your partner? Or are you having more of a connection with this person and your partnership has taken a bit of a, a spiral downwards where you guys aren't communicating as much? Because this is something you have to really pay close attention to. It's not okay to be emotionally connected to someone else and your partner is sort of taking a back seat to it. If there's a situation within your partnership at home that there isn't a communication or it's changed or over the years it's just kind of nobody puts the effort in anymore, you're asking for trouble thinking that you're being okay just talking to someone else. We all know what happens after a while you get more and more brazen, more flirty, more playful, and then all of a sudden you start doing things that you wouldn't normally have done before. Emotional connections are huge. Don't think that they're not going to turn into something more. Because let's face it, if we just have a strict sexual relationship with somebody, we're missing the element of the emotional connection, right? So what do we do? We're looking for that outside of this strictly sexual booty call relationship. We want more. Now I know that sounds really harsh because some people are just playfully flirting and to them it's no big deal. Trust me, it's always a big deal because when you're emotionally connected to somebody and you have really good rapport and the communication is super strong and you continue to talk to them, it gets more and more heightened as time goes by. Let's talk about what causes someone to go and have an emotional connection outside the relationship. Well, the first one is they're not getting the same connection at home. That's number one. You're not communicating with your partner in the way that you would like to. So something's missing. So you might have found it with somebody else very harmlessly. You might have known them and just you start talking about why well, I want these things to change at home. And all of a sudden they become a constant conversation where you're being a little bit more secretive, you're kind of talking to them behind closed doors, and you're getting into a deeper connection and conversation with this person. Another thing could happen is that your relationship has been there for a long time, and both of you have just kind of given up and not putting as much energy into it. You become lazy, you become complacent. Well, it takes two people to keep a relationship going, so you can't just blame your partner on this one. You have to take some ownership here too if you want to keep things alive. Sometimes it's because people have literally checked out of their relationship and they're on the way out, but they don't have the strength or they're not 100% sure whether they want to leave, so they find somebody that they can have this connection with without cheating. So a lot of people think that cheating is just on a sexual level, but it's not. Because if you're really emotionally connected with somebody, that's a huge, huge part of a relationship. And as I said earlier, sex is one of the parts of it, but you want to be friends. You want to be able to talk and laugh with each other. And if you can have that with somebody else and not your partner, and it's lacking at home, well, you are going to go looking for it or come across it even if it's accidentally. And you're going to welcome it into your world because you're missing it. Sometimes people have emotional affairs just because it's fun. It's different. It's outside the boundaries of what they're allowed. So it's a little bit of forbidden fruit and they kind of toy with it and have fun with it. But there's a big problem with that. There's a third person involved here and that third party 
is now a part of your relationship because they're talking to you outside of their home, their family, and you're putting energy, that, that person is putting energy and time into you. So it's kind of selfish in a way here. So you want to make sure that your connection with somebody that you have is more on the friendship level. It's becoming emotional, then you need to reevaluate what's going on. Is this something that you want to pursue and maybe your relationship is over? You have to make that decision. But it's not fair to keep two people in the lurch here about what's going on because you're having a good time talking or having an emotional connection. You want to make sure that it's not hurting anybody. If it's getting to the point where you're being a little deceitful, secretive, all those kind of things, you're on to a very dangerous phase. And this is something that you need to figure out whether your relationship is over or whether you want to stop this emotional connection and learn how to have one with your partner. Because you've got a lot of years invested with somebody and it's worthwhile trying to get things back if you've got that much time and energy put into a relationship. Okay, let's talk about having an emotional connection with our own partner, not somebody else. Let's try this. Let's see what we can do to bring that back if it's lost in our relationship. Well, the first thing you do is whatever you're doing with this person that's bringing you excitement and joy, try to implement that within your own relationship. Have date nights, have little sexting conversations, do things that are romantic outside of the house. Don't get caught up in just everyday life and what goes on. Make sure you have some fun in your life. It's not all about paying bills and, and the kids going to school and all that other stuff. You met each other first and you need to keep this fresh and alive. You need to be able to just keep going and making every day a little bit better. Sit down and talk to each other. Make sure you have half an hour a day, maybe after work, whatever, just for you two. You're face to face, you're talking about stuff. It's not just all doom and gloom about what's going on in the world, what's going on at work. You wanna be able to have deep conversations and talk about what's important to you, what you, what you like about them. Give some positive feedback. Let's try and bring back this, this court, you know, courtship that's gone, this romance. Because if you can have it with somebody else, it's still there. It's still there in you, and I'm sure it's still there with your partner. You just have to unite and bring it together as a couple. That's the problem, because we do get lazy. We come home, we see the same person every day, we have you know, sex with the same person, and all of a sudden it can be a little bit on the dull side. So we have to spice it up and you can spice it up with your partner. So if you're going and being this person who is finding people to talk to and have emotional connections with, you really are cheating your partner and you're cheating yourself out, out of having a real relationship as well. So either try and make things work at home or look at your wife or, or husband or whatever and just say to them, you know what, things have changed between us. We either need to go to counseling or we need to move on because this isn't right about living sort of this double life. It's not fair to anybody. So thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to my channel here at Dear Cypress Sue if you haven't already done so. Please leave your comments below. And if you have any show topics, I'm always ready to hear what you have to say. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.